Hi, I'm Semir Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Analysis of Self-Oscillating Flyback Converter. There is a disclaimer here that the circuit shown in this video is presented for educational purposes only. It is not recommended for practical use. Now we have today control ICs for operating DC to DC converter, like a flyback converter in this case, and this is the right way to do today. This circuit that I'm showing is very clever and it is for educational purposes to understand how it works, but this is really not a good design for a practical application today. So here is the circuit. This is the flyback. We have here the primary and two secondary, uh, 300 turns at the primary and eight and eight at the secondary. This is the output and this is for feedback, okay, for feedback. We have a line here. This is intended for a 220 volt line. So the voltage here will be about 300 volt. We have a transistor. It's, an, it's a BJT, bipolar junction transistor, which is driving this uh, magnetic element. And then there is some feedback. I'll talk about it. And then an auxiliary transistor. So this is the circuit. Now you can find it in a post, in a LinkedIn post. This is the link to it and I'm going to print the link in the description section of the video that you are now watching. So let me say a few words about what is really needed for a self-oscillating converter. Okay, first of all, we need a power stage, of course, input voltage, then output voltage. Then we have to have some mechanism for stabilizing the output, the feedback. So we need a reference. So the output is compared to the reference. And then what we need in a self-oscillating converter is some mechanism of positive feedback. Because otherwise there is a danger that the system will sort of be stuck or frozen to a given point and it will not oscillate, will not start oscillating. So you do have to have positive feedback in a system like that. This is very, very crucial for the operation, for the continuous operation and also for this self-start because if there is no disturbance then the system might get stuck to some dc point and then uh, it will not function so the positive feedback is very important so here it is what we have here is the stage itself the circuit itself this is again a flyback 300 turn primary eight to secondary uh, the two secondaries and there is a major problem here, which I really don't understand. And that is the following. This transistor is specified to a, for a maximum voltage VCO of 400 volt. Now, if we have five volt here, about five volt, and then the ratio is 300 to eight, then we're going to have here, when the transistor is off, we're going to have here the primary 187 volt, this is five times 300 over eight, plus the 300 volt, so it's already 487, and this is without an overshoot oscillation, etc. This transistor again is specified for 400 volt. So I don't know, is it a mistake, or they are using this transistor and seems to be working okay, so that's fine, I don't know. So this is a question, I'm not going to dwell on it because I have no way to find an answer. And of course the operation, the idea of the circuit is independent of this question. This is just an issue that uh, I don't know uh, how to explain it. So let's start with this issue of self-start. Suppose the transistor is conducting. If it is conducting, then you have a current here and this transistor acts actually as a current limiter. And the reason is that when you have the current here, there is a voltage which is building up on this 10 ohm. And if the voltage is more than say 0.6 volt, the transistor will start conducting and there will be no feed to this transistor, okay? So this is a very conventional current limiter, this transistor. Now the magnitude of this current is the 0.6, about 0.6, divided by 10 ohm, because this is the current, which comes up to be 60 milliamp. So a DC condition is 60 milliamp, and it can be sort of stuck. However, there is a positive feedback here, which will get it going. 
For starting the operation, you do need a transition or noise. In any practical circuit, real physical circuit, there is noise. And if there is a positive feedback, then this noise is building up and eventually the unit will oscillate. So to understand this positive feedback, let me just assume here that we have a transition, either due to the turn on or due to noise. And let's see how this transition propagates. Okay, so if we have a positive going transition, then we're going to have here at the collector a negative going voltage, which in this point here, due to the dots here, will be again a positive going. Here the dot is negative, so here it's negative and here it's positive. Now then we have this RC circuit here, that this transition can be transferred or will be transferred as a current to back to the base. So here we have this positive feedback. Now the gain here is high due to the high inductance of the primary, we'll see it later on. But we have here, of course, a step down between the 300 and 8. So if the gain will be more than 300 to 8, then it will be still positive feedback. And I've not checked it. The fact is that it really starts to oscillate in, in the simulation. I bet that the gain is sufficient. Okay, so this is the issue of positive feedback. So once we have this avalanche going, the transistor will move into deeper and deeper conduction because the current will build up. We have a positive voltage here. The primary is connected at the dot to ground or close to ground. It here is positive. So the no dot terminal is positive. So this is positive. And then there is a path here that we talked about going this way. And it continues into the base going this way and then coming back into this secondary winding, okay? So we have here a transition, which is sort of turning the transistor on and on until it's actually in saturation, such that we are in the on time. So this is the on time, okay? But we have another current path here. And this is due to the fact that this capacitor is charged. It is charged, in fact, to the output voltage. I'll show it during the off time. This is when it is actually being charged to the output voltage. So now it has the voltage of the output. And then there is a path here. This is a thinner. And the net voltage is the difference between the thinner voltage and, and the voltage of the capacitor. Now, the higher the voltage of the capacitor, the shorter will be the on time because this current now is opposing the current that we've seen earlier. This is this current here, and it is actually reducing it. And in fact, as we'll see, actually it's uh, reversing it because in a BJT, you need a negative current to accelerate the turn off of the transistor. So we have this path here. So this is in fact the stabilizing process in which the output voltage is compared to a reference. And when the output voltage is too high, then the on time is becoming smaller. So this is the process of stabilization in this circuit. Now, once the current will go down to zero, then we have now a transition on the opposite direction. So it will flip to the off time. And now we are in the off time. The off time, the transistor is not conducting. And then the voltage here now is positive. It's positive here at the dot, positive here. So this is a negative voltage. This is the time that the energy stored in the magnetic element during the on time is fed to the capacitor, in fact, charging it now. And here we have also this diode conducting because this is negative voltage. And we have a path like this. Now the voltage drop on this uh, resistor is small. And then we have some time constant at which the voltage here is charging this capacitor. Now this voltage is equal to this one because there are the same number of turns. And this voltage here is the output plus a diode. So the voltage of the capacitor is 
this voltage minus the diode, so the voltage on this capacitor is the output voltage. So this is then used later on uh, to compare it to the reference. So this is now the instant that first of all we are powering the output and charging this capacitor to the output voltage. But then there's another path here, and that is this path here. This is minus here, plus here. So there is a current here going this way, this way, feeding the transistor, getting it into saturation, and then in fact passing, because the high current, passing through this diode back here. This is kind of strange, but it is a fact. I'll show it later on. So this current now depends on the time constant here. So obviously it's going to decay depending on the time constant. So we have here a constant of time because this is now determining the off time of this circuit. So we have now a DC to DC converter in which we have a constant of time and the on time is controlled. So the usage cycle of course is changing but then the frequency will not be, of course, constant, okay? This is, the, there will be a change in frequency if there is a change in the loading, for example. So to look at the operation of the circuit, I've set up an empty spice schematics. Here it is. It's one-to-one uh, -to, -one to the original circuit, except for the fact that I haven't found LT spice model for all the components, the transistor, in fact, the diode, and the zener diode. So I did my best to find replacement. And then also, there's no indication in the schematics in, of the circuit, original schematics, what is the magnetization inductance of the primary. So I've tested a number of values, and I found that the 10 mini Henry is a good number. And this is how this uh, circuit is run. So here it is. Now, I'm not going into all the fine details just to say that uh, it is uh, validating my explanation. You can go over, you see all these currents and you see the voltages of the gate. So you can go over it, just freeze it and compare it to the circuit itself. I'm not going to dwell into it except for two issues that I think might have caused some raising of eyebrows because they are not conventional. And these are, first of all, this reverse current that I've said is now flowing here, which is actually adjusting the duty cycle, which is kind of strange, strange current. And it's going to be negative current here. And then this current here, which also looks kind of strange and unusual, I'd say. So uh, just to show you that these are real, I'm plotting these two here. So this is the collector current of the lower transistor. You see the negative part here. This spike here is during the transition. And then we see here the base current of the main transistor, of the upper transistor. It is supposed to be positive, but then it goes negative. This is trying to turn off the transistor and then it flips and then goes to zero. So the current that I've shown you, which are kind of, again, maybe to some look impossible, are real and happening in this circuit. Now, the performance of the circuit is not too bad. I've uh, used the, the step command to sweep the load. So this is the resistance of load from 1 ohm to, say, about 50. This is the output voltage, and this is the output current. And you see that uh, for a load of, say, uh, 6 ohm, which is about, uh, I don't know, 0.8 amp, it's starting to be pretty good. And then, of course, it's uh, becoming higher and higher, like the 5.5 it's supposed to be. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Fairly nice. But again, I don't think that today you'd like to design a product around a self-oscillating uh, flyback. There are so many control ICs of high performance and reliability. In the circuit that I've run, I've used a coupling coefficient of one. This is just to get clean waveforms. In reality, of course, a coupling coefficient of one is impossible. So I'm running now the same circuit with a coupling coefficient of 0.99. I've added here a clamp. This could be a Zener or an RC circuit. 
There is preparation for an RC snubber. It's not operational now because this is a 2 mega ohm resistor, so it's basically non-contacting, but it can be used to lower the oscillation. So if you run it, we see the typical performance of a practical flyback. We see the typical oscillation. Here is the clamp. We see it overall in the circuit, of course. This is on the collector of the main transistor on the magnetic element. And of course, it being reflected in other parts of the circuit, like in the case of uh, the base voltage of the main transistor. Here is when the transistor is conducting. Well, here you got this uh, disturbance during the off time of the transistor. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. It's a very clever circuit and it's a good lesson in analog electronics.